Hey guys, Joshua Zamora here, and welcome again to another session in the Samurai Dojo. Today, I'm extremely excited to have one of the SEO experts uh, online here, Peter Gary, to share with us a little bit about what's going on in SEO today. Uh, so please grab your pen and paper and get ready to take some copious notes. Uh, Peter, it's great to have you here, and I'm really excited for today's session. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm I'm pleasure to be here. Awesome. So just to get things started a little bit, um, let's just give people a little bit about your background. So how, what were you doing before you got into internet marketing? Yeah, so I, I have been uh, online like I have been entrepreneur all my life, right? So I started when I was 13 years old. Uh, I built my company with 200 employees. So when I was 20 years old, I had 200 employees uh, and a really seven-figure business. But uh, then in 2008, um, Obviously, on the way uh, until 2008, I made a bunch of mistakes, uh, and I basically lost everything. I was bankrupt. I I didn't have any money, nothing, seven figures in debts, and I was like, I remember clearly the moment in uh, around December of 2008 when I was sitting in my my kitchen. I was thinking, this is the first time in my life, but I when I really don't know what I'm going to do. I mean, I'm totally no options, you know, and. Uh, like seriously back against the wall and I had all these dads, I had just newborn son, you know, and and really frustrating moment and that's how I got online. So I started to uh, build some internet marketing, uh, kind of uh, internet uh, e-commerce shop um, and then I realized that that's not something I'm really interested in and, and that's where I, I discovered make money online stuff, big headlines on uh, ClickBank, you know, people are making crazy amount of money and I was like, is it really possible, you know? And and that's how I basically get started. So my journey was like, you know, um, from offline entrepreneur with the with the business, with employees and everything, to really getting down to the to the not even ground level. It's a couple of levels be below that, right? And, <laughs> and then starting from there, you know. So so tough, tough. Yeah, absolutely. So how long did it actually take you? So you got started in 2008, and how long did it actually take you to finally see that breakthrough success? Because it kind of seems like, you know, all of us go through that time period where, you know, we're just like beating our head against the wall. Uh, how long did it take you to, to finally get that breakthrough? Yeah, for me it was uh, really frustrating. So first of all, obviously, uh, as you can hear, uh, English is not my first language, right? So I didn't know how to write anything. You know, I couldn't write. So I could speak, but I couldn't write anything in English. And as you know, when you get started, you are basically facing uh, one of the biggest opportunities as everybody is picturing that, which is SEO, right? And But when it comes to SEO, you, you need to be able to create content and you need to be able to do it on a mass scale, right? And so I struggled for first 14 months without making any money. So I was just focusing on one website, building one travel website. I created around 300 pages of unique content, myself writing content every single day. In the beginning, it took six hours to create one single article, so basically a page of content. Later, I became a little bit better. It took me like four hours or something, right? So that was my first start, right? And since I'm kind of a very dedicated person, which means that I when, I when I start something, I don't drop it just because it doesn't work. In this case, it worked against me, so I wasn't looking around. I wasn't chasing opportunities or something like that. I was just, you know, just focusing on things that people told me I supposed to do to make money online, right? Like building websites, create unique content, and all of that stuff that quote unquote works, right? So. I go through. I went through all of that, and then in 2010, I realized that I was actually focusing on totally wrong things. You know, I was focusing on mastering SEO as SEO and not SEO as a tool to make money, right? So, and I was chasing like, okay, let's get the first first page rankings without understanding whether it will actually bring in me money. Maybe it's better to get 20 other keywords ranked on first page of Google uh, on bottom. For example, bottom 10, right? Uh, then to rank one keyword on number one, which is not making money, but those 20 makes money, right? So kind of those things, and I think a lot of people can relate to that because I mean we have this big dream to have the the two-word keyword, which is super money keyword, ranked on the first page of Google, and then all the problems would disappear, and suddenly we will become rich and and, and fat, right? <laughs> but. Uh, 
<laughs> but it doesn't work that way, right? It's much more uh, sophisticated, and you just need to understand how that element uh, or that um, animal called Google works. And once you understand it, you un you realize that it's never about one keyword. It's it's more about how you create your website, how you structure it, how you build the whole thing out. So you can literally rank for thousands of keywords at the same time, and then you pick those jewels that can bring you traffic and really you optimize th those pages in a way that, that, that makes you money. And that's what I discovered in 2010. So it really took me like, like I, I, I really thought that I'm the first idiot online, seriously. <laughs> and because I just couldn't make anything work, you know? Yeah, and, and I mean, 14 months, that, that's not a short period of time. You know, most people, they, they two to three months and they quit. So, I mean, that that's a, a, a very important lesson there that if, if you're willing to stick through it and you're willing to put the work, long hours, I mean, creating a website with 300 pages yourself, uh, that just, you know, that's amazing. I mean, that shows the resilience that, you know, that you really want to succeed. And I, I think that's another thing that people need to get out of that is that, you know, if you really want to be successful, you, you just got to go out there and do it. You know, don't wait for anybody. Don't wait for the for you know anything. Just go out there and, and, and do it. Um, and I think that that's one thing that's very important. Um, the, the dedication is. I would say the dedication is critical. Uh, but you also need to be aware of what you are doing. You really need to kind of get that sense of feeling that what you are doing actually will result. Will give, will give some kind of result. You know. Quite, there is there is so many people that just you know try something out it doesn't work and the reason why it doesn't work is because they don't filter it through themselves so they don't feel it right they just look at the thing okay this is step one step two step three they implement nothing happens but as you know that's not how this business works it, you have to have the feeling about the whole ec ecosystem that that it will produce the results and when you have that that's that's where you get something. Yeah, absolutely, 100% agree. Uh, so let, let's kind of you mentioned a little bit uh, about keyword research there. Uh, so let, let's talk about how you actually approach your keyword research. You know, you said that you went from you know trying to target those one or two you know big money keywords that a lot of people would want to go after to you know switching over to targeting 20, 30 different keywords. So how do you approach your keyword research today to really uh, get the maximum amount of traffic? Yeah, I do it in a very, very simple way, and uh, you have to, uh, ha I mean, you know this, but people must understand that there is one single element that uh, basically Google is looking for, and it's called the relevance. Uh, so everything that you create around your website, I mean, you can use some black hat tactics or whatever, right, but at the end of the day, if you are looking for long-term results, it all relates to relevance, right? And when you know that, there is actually a tool that Google provides, which is Google Keyword Planner, that actually gives how Google understands relevance for a particular keywords. So when you go to Google Keyword Planner, you type in the keyword, uh, it is automatically sorted by relevance, or you can sort that by relevance. They recently changed it, but you can still, there's even more options now than it was before. So you can sort it by relevance, and then when you build the content around those keywords that come up there, you are onto something because you maximize the on-page SEO factors, uh, which is what most people don't do. And then when you do something like uh, backlinks or something like that, then the page just jumps on the first page because you have maximized the on-page power. And there's a lot of people that uh, do things like uh, they, they buy these keyword tools, um, they, they find keywords with a good search volume, and then they pick that keyword, then they do another search, they find something else, they find something else afterwards and something else more, and then they stick those on a single website and then they wonder why things are not working. That's not how this functions. You have to go through the relevancy to build the what I call niche level rankings, which means that Google recognizes you as a niche authority and then it's pretty much just that. Uh, finding the proper backlinks, couple of backlinks, not a lot of backlinks, and that's what produces results. Okay, perfect. So that, that kind of leads us into, into my next question. So, um, you know, once you have those kind of keywords picked out, um, do you prefer, uh, you know, kind of building an exact match domain, uh, you know, small niche site, or do you go after more of the authority site um, kind of things uh, that way? 
Uh, you see, I, I have done both. Uh, I have done a lot of these sites. I have built over 1,000 sites uh, in these years. Uh, th these are sites that I have personally looked at, and I have gathered data from them. Uh, so I, I have found the middle ground between a huge authority site, which requires a lot of content, and kind of small niche site, which is like five pages or 10 pages, right? So I have found the middle, which is about, um, about 50 pages in total. So it would be that you start with five, then you regularly add more, and basically in the first 30, 60 days, you schedule content like um, one post per day or one post every other day, and you basically grow it to around 50, um, 50 pages. And when you grow that, uh, like this middle niche site to that level, then what you get is you start to see rankings for hundreds and sometimes even thousands of different keywords. Because obviously what you think you are targeting is most of the time is not what Google thinks you are targeting. And I have extensive research uh, done about this and I have even a report that reveals uh, this, uh, this kind of mechanics behind it. So how Google engineers words in order to understand what your page is targeting. But in any case, when, when, Google, when Google basically crawls your 50 pages or whatever, how, how many you, you create, uh, Google recognizes different word combinations that uh, they display in Google Webmaster Tools. And that's a good starting point to take the next steps and explore and find the real traffic, uh, how I like to call hidden traffic gems, which basically produce massive results in a very short period of time because nobody's focusing on them. Everybody goes for those two word keywords that, that kind of will produce uh, massive results, but we know that they are pretty hard to get rankings for. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I found too as well that once you start building those uh, bigger sites, you not only are, are you going to rank for those keywords that you're targeting, but you also, like you said, start ranking for other terms based on relevancy. So, yeah. um, you know, a bunch of different variations of terms. And then, like you said, you, know, you can go to your Google Analytics and see all the other keywords that you're yeah. getting for. Um, so so once once you kind of got that set up and, and, you know, you built out the site to 50 sites, uh, 50 pages, how, how, how do you prefer to monetize your sites? Do you do AdSense? Do you do affiliate pages? Do you build your list? How, how, once your site is built, it's getting traffic, how do you monetize that? Basically, in my company, the number one thing that we do is we build less because obviously that's the most valuable thing. But we also monetize with AdSense. We, we try to explore all the monetization opportunities as much as possible. Obviously, we split test pages and we see what converts, what doesn't, and what produces their ROI that we need. But our core and number one kind of thing is list building. And I remember this from Brian Tracy a long time ago, and it's not about SEO, obviously, but it's, it's, it's more about business management. And he said that in each business, there is one number that is more important than anything else. You see, there is a bunch of numbers. For us, it can be traffic, it can be rankings on Google, you know, it can be list building, it can be how many sales you get, how many people click links, and how many links you have for the page. Like, there's so many numbers. And, People look at these and they are confused. They look at one number and another and they don't understand how to put this together to make it work. So what do you need to find is one number that is more important than anything else and then you focus how that number grows and you kind of um, look at your business from that number. So if, if the number grows uh, as you expected, your business is growing as well, right? If, if it doesn't, then there is some problem and you need to find a solution for that. So in our business, it's, uh, it's list building. So when we create, for example, weight loss sites and, and stuff like that, we, we basically focus on list building. So we create some free report or a video course or something like that, and we just give it away to build the list because obviously that's the easiest and long-term uh, monetization. Like website can disappear. Uh, it can get hacked, for example, or as you know, there's a bunch of these happening right now, and I recently had one problem with one of my uh, major sites uh, where, for some reason, I forgot to uh, enable backup after a serious update, uh, and we basically got somebody uh, creating a directory inside of my cPanel and basically creating additional site, but there's nothing for that site in, except the config file, and as a result, my Google Webmaster tool shows uh, 20,000 keywords, which are some spammy keywords, nothing related to my website. It took like, took like ages to clear it out. So 
you see, it's it's really really about all about you know understanding these things in a proper way, and then then you just uh, figure out what works for you, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so let let me kind of back up a little bit because there was one question that I want to ask and I and I completely missed it. So. Uh, what, what, before you get the monetizations in there, what are some of, when you go to post the content onto your site, what are some of the must-have um, optimization strategies that you implement that, you know, that, that are just must-have? What, what, are, what are those for you? Yeah, there, there, are, there are just a couple of, and I, and I definitely, I don't advocate and I don't use those, you know, those score plugins that gives you, like, optimization score and you need to put H1, H2, H3, and if you don't bold or italicize something, then nothing works. Uh, it's, it's not how Google looks at it at all. So what, I, what we do is basically we, have, we make sure we have keyword in the title. We make sure we have a couple of keywords, related keywords in description without making description spammy. So we, we want to make sure that when the description is created, there is a primary keyword and something that is close related that makes sense in the description. And then, uh, basically, in the, con in the in the text, we make sure to have an optimized YouTube video, an optimized image. Um, so basically, for image, it's alt tag. For YouTube videos, it's schema.org markup. So that's properly set up. And also now, it's very important to put Facebook open graph because when people share, uh, I, I see constantly like people want to get likes and people want to get shares. But when their content is shared, um, it sucks, right? It looks Terrible. Like there is yeah, I see that all the time. Yeah, and you have seen my images on, on for example, if you go now to, to my, any of my sites and you, you press sharing button, you will get a nice thumbnail coming up on, on, uh, uh, on Facebook with call to action, right? And a lot of people don't realize that it's, it's how you get new visitors. It's how you get traffic. It's not about the link that is shared there, but it's what, what they see uh, when the link it, when the Facebook basically fetches the link. So it's, it's very important, so we make sure that's there. And then we optimize based on words, which, is, which would take me an hour to explain, and I have even a webinar that explains that. But basically, we make sure that the, the most significant words that are used on the page are basically, by combining those words, we get the keyword that we are actually targeting. And that's how we basically make sure that our targeting matches what Google sees. Because most of the time, it's not the case. Most of the time, people focus on density. And density is like so abstract term that like nobody can tell whether you need 1% or 3% or 5% because it doesn't make sense. What makes sense is that individual word, individual single word combination that produces the targeted uh, keyword. That's how Google basically understands it. So, so it's a bit more complex. Uh, but it works really, really well. We we yeah. get we get rankings for on first page without any backlink at all. And then when we do backlink, then it's a serious, serious stuff. Awesome, awesome. So let, let's talk a little bit about that. Let's talk about so, some of the backlinks that you like to implement in your in your sites to that really get good results. If you wanted to share just a few of them that you that you just love, uh, the, yeah. the type of backlinks. So um, as you know, I have a couple of trainings about backlinking, but uh, one of the one of the most important principle that a lot of people miss, uh, and it's a principle of branding your site. So the most important thing that you need to start when you create a new site is create what I call announcement network. And what's announcement network? It's when you create your official um, accounts on Web 2.0 sites and uh, social media sites, right? Uh, and the reason why you need those, it's first of all for the branding, especially if you do local business consulting. So if you work with local businesses, you need to provide some branding and uh, I, I don't, uh, it's called like reputation management or something to make sure what shows up for the brand name, it's, it's what you want to show up. Um, and then basically you create, you create accounts on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, um, WordPress.com, Tumblr, Blogger.com, LiveJournal, Typepad, so those sort of sites. So Google sees that these are official sites, so you are not hiding who you are. You are not hiding, uh, like on those sites you officially say, hey, this is my official site like at, on Tumblr, right? It's like you have a Facebook page, right? You say officially, that's my Facebook page, or that's my YouTube channel, right? So the same thing uh, must be done for uh, every single website, right? And it, it doesn't take much work. Um, it literally takes maybe a couple of hours. You do it once. 
And then whenever you write a content and publish content on your site, you distribute that content throughout that announcement channel. So you basically announce, hey, hey guys, I just published a new content, right? And it doesn't matter what kind of site you have, whether you have niche site that is targeting, I don't know, something from Amazon products or, or you have a real branded site, it doesn't matter. But you execute the strategy uh, first and foremost. And then afterwards, you create a web people on our site for what I call traffic generation network, which is basically for backlinking purposes. And most of those, um, most of the time, you need those for diversification because obviously the, the most effective backlinking is uh, your own private network or uh, links from high paging sites. Uh, those are hugely effective, especially if you get them from relevant places. And we have our own network that we use in order to make it happen. And we make it happen with very few backlinks, which is, which is important. But if you don't have a diversification, you just build high page rank backlinks, then you might get into the trouble because Google knows that that's not natural way how backlinks are growing for the website. So I would say that Web 2.0 side social bookmarking is the number one. And then once you have that, and let's say a week goes by or two weeks go by, and you see Google index those backlinks, then you just plug in some um, private networks and you are pretty much guaranteed rankings. Awesome. Now, just uh, how many uh, Web 2.0 uh, backlinks do you usually build? Do you have a specific number or do you kind of switch yeah. it up every time? Yeah, I, ba I basically go, um, my, my kind of uh, rules and thumb is that we create five to 10 Web 2.0 sites per category. And the minimum categories that we create on any website is four because how it comes up with is that when you target your homepage, you have you basically target five keywords. You target primary keyword, which is the most important money keyword you want to rank for. And um, there is a biggest problem that people make with when that keyword is that they take that keyword as very narrow. So you want to make it as broad as possible, but not not totally one word keyword, right? But maybe two three words that represents a bunch of stuff from your niche, right? And then you have four secondary keywords, and those are actually the real money keywords, right? And we call them silos. So we create them in a silo fashion, right? Which is which means that every post inside of those categories will link back to the respective money page in within the silo to maximize the power of that, right? And and so so we start with five, so homepage and four silos, right? And then from there we go like further. And obviously, when it comes to backlinks, we then, then focus for each silo to create respective Web 2.0 backlinks and, and push high, high, um, high page rank backlinks for the individual silos. And the funny thing is, once you start to do this properly and once you start to publish posts in the silo categories and once you do the internal linking properly, suddenly your site is ranking everywhere. And that's the magic that happens. And that's something that I didn't know when I started out is I was focusing on one keyword, like if I will rank for this keyword that will make millions of dollars, which never happened obviously. <laughs> um, obviously, right? Yeah, so yeah, when, when you focus on individual silos and you, you construct them in a very simple but uh, effective way, the results are just impressive. Just yeah, impressive. absolutely. And, and I think this leads us perfectly into you know, what you've got coming out this next week because I, I know it does a lot of what we've talked about Yep. You know, now, you know, automatically inside of one place. Uh, so if you want, if you want to just kind of talk a little bit about what you've got going on, the P1 traffic machine, because, uh, I mean, I I'm excited for it because, guys, if, if you're watching this, I mean, everything that we kind of just talked about right now, um, this is what this, this new software that he's put together does. So if you want to kind of just lead into it and, and share with people what you've got going on. Yeah, so... Um... Basically, first of all, I want to share how P1 Traffic Machine came about, right? Um, so what we realized is that by, by talking to our customers, we have a bunch of customers, so we talk to our customers and we say, what is the uh, single biggest problem for you when it comes to getting results with SEO, right? And obviously the, the answer was lack of time because there is so much you need to do, right? If you are building a site, you need to research keywords. You need to build silo structure, right? First of all, you need to understand what the silo structure is, right? then you need to build it, then you need to do inter internal linking, then you need to build uh, content for, um, to launch a website, then you need to build content for regular updates, right? Uh, and then you need to monetize the website and understand how that works, right? 
So the list is so long that, as I said, uh, it took me 14 months to figure this out, right? And what I wanted to produce is um, it's something that would do those 14 months with a single click. Uh, so basically, if you think about um, the reason why you joined and why you signed up for a venture called online business is not because you want to get MBA in SEO, right? I mean, I didn't sign up for that. I didn't know what SEO is. I didn't know what a keyword is. Right, and I think nobody wants to do that. What we want is we want to produce something. We want to use something that produces results. We are marketers. We want to market something that makes us money. Right, and if the technology behind it is uh, and technique behind it is SEO, that's fine. So we we sat down and we looked for a solution that would do that. And um, the the our discovery was pretty much insanity because. There are, there are people that are freaks about SEO, so they think that they can build a plugin or something like that, and they build a plugin so complex that you need to get um, MBA in some engineering in order to understand the interface of it, right? Yeah. And that just like, like I, I kind of get it. And, and that's if it works at all, right? There are so many that doesn't work at all, right? There are so many that doesn't allow you to edit content, you know? They generate some content, which is so so right and then you can't edit it right how it's possible we know that if, if you start to rank for hundreds of keywords and you find a hidden gem within those keywords that can produce your results obviously you will want to go and manually edit the content and maximize the result right but if you can't do that it's not possible right so we created p1 traffic machine that basically serves two type of people. First, people who want to build sites uh, quickly in multiple niches and just maximize uh, the revenue uh, possible from sites. So let's say you s there is a launch coming up, right? And you know that you could rank for product name or product name plus, um, plus bonus. So this is called the launch jacket, right? So what do you need? You need quickly build the site. You don't want to build a site that is like, now for three weeks we'll write some content, you know, and then We'll try to figure out how to optimize. You want to quickly have a site ready for specific keywords, right? And then there's another category, which is a, like semi-professional SEOs and people that do local business consulting. They want to have a full control of everything. They want to understand exactly which keywords are, goes to the silos. They want to build the content manually. They want to adjust it. They want to make sure that link, links are going the right way. So we want to target both people and satisfy both people because I'm now so kind of good in SEO that I need that manual option because I want to configure my site manually just because I know what I needs to be done. But there are so many people that don't know that and they don't need to spend 14 months like I did in order to learn some basic SEO stuff, right? So, so we produce the software that does it, and uh, if you want, I can do a little bit of demo of that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, feel free to jump into the demo. I know I'm excited to see it. Yeah. So, what I will do now, I will switch my screen, and then you let me know if you can see that. So let's say, let's see. So now you should be seeing something like. I like website site manager. Let me know if you can see that. Yep, there it goes. Yeah, so, so let, let me do the, the quick um, uh, reset. So I will delete entire site uh, with one button uh, so we can start from scratch. So uh, let, let me just delete it. So now ev all, everything is deleted. So basically categories, uh, posts, pages are deleted. And the reason why I want to do this is just to demonstrate uh, the fresh, kind of fresh site, right? So basically, when you provide a couple of settings of P1 traffic machine, then you will be presented with this screen where you can type in your primary keyword and start to generate the site. And uh, just to quickly show you, so if we go here to uh, post tab, so there's no post, as you can see, right? So there is no post. If you go to categories, um, there is no categories. And if you go to pages, I just want to show that there is no setup before that. Yeah, completely blank site. Yeah, so this is blank site. I just deleted the site. So this is my demo site. I play with it a lot. So um, yeah, just loading slowly. But basically, you will see that the page is not there as well. Yeah, it's, it's loading slowly. So for example, if I'm, I'm typing in organi organization, 
tips. For example, let's say uh, we want to target that keyword, right? And then I click, um, yeah, it's still loading slowly. Why it's loading slowly? There we go. So we have pages. Yeah. So if we click now, generate my site, it, it will do everything. And I want to point out that if you are um, kind of uh, a little bit more knowledgeable about SEO, you can just click this enter manual configuration and basically you will be taken to the manual screen where you can do everything step-by-step uh, -step manually but still in the fashion which allows you to organize everything. So all the silos, everything is organized. You don't need to do some technical stuff, right? So if I click this button now, everything happens. So basically the keyword is saved. Now um, P1 Traffic Machine will go out, find relevant uh, keywords within the silos, so it will build five silos. As you can see, there's uh, four silos, sorry. Uh, it builds four silos. Uh, now it will find keywords within the silos. Uh, it will find content within the silos. It will do all the things. It will generate the content. It will find YouTube videos, images, everything, and it will put it on the page. So it, it just takes basically usually under two minutes, um, sometimes wow, so, a little so, bit. So, what, so this, that looks amazing. So what, what I'm seeing now is so you just put in your one keyword yeah. and then this uh, P1 Track Machine is just going out and getting all the other relevant terms and kind of just creating the whole yeah. site. Wow, that is amazing. Yeah, it's, it, you, you don't need to, that, that's what I'm saying, that you just need to know what you want to target. It can be a product name, it can be whatever keyword it is, whatever niche, it doesn't matter. You put it in, and you just get um, get results. So now it's uh, it also does things like, for example, here you go. So you have the site ready. Um, uh, he also uh, the P1 Traffic Machine also does things like configure uh, permalink settings, set sets the homepage um, static homepage for the targeted keyword. Uh, so all that stuff. And uh, what's most important, it creates dynamic menus, which I will show you in a moment. So. What you see here is now, this is the primary keyword that we target for entire website, and we have four silos. And in each silo, we have a bunch of keywords, right? And if you go and refresh this right now. And it, it's amazing how relevant all, all the keywords that are pulled. I mean, yeah. you put organization tips in, and there's you know, tips for organizing your room. Uh, all, it's a, that's, that's awesome. So, so look at this. We have 31 posts. Um, if you refresh the categories, we have all the categories, so four categories, and if we refresh the pages uh, here, we will have five pages. So we have the home page, and we will have uh, four silo pages. Now, there is there's a lot of smart stuff happening under the hood. So for example, there is like categories, you have a real categories, but they are automatically redirected to the silo pages because you want to have silo pages as the strongest money pages on your site, right? So when you would actually go to the category, it would automatically redirect to the respect, respective silo page. And that's something that is really hard to configure with WordPress. Yeah, uh, that's what I was about to say. That, that is awesome, because I know I, I've, I personally once tried to figure out how to do that myself, and I've spent so much time on forums and things trying to figure out yep. what the code, and I, I just gave up. <laughs> yeah, it's really, really hard. That's, the one, that's one of the hardest parts. Um, there is one more which I will show you in a moment. So basically from the screen what you can do, you can do everything. You can delete keywords, you can remove the content, you can generate new keywords, you can block keywords, you can preview the content, you can do absolutely anything. So what this means, it means for example if I'm not happy with the silo, right, because I mean let's be honest, it's automation so it will not be satisfying for everybody in all the million situations, right. Like, for example, right now, I don't want to have this organization as the silo. So what I do, I just click this button, and it's going to delete all the content related to that. You see how fast it was? Yeah, Even that's didn't, amazing. It wasn't able to finish it. And if I now go to the post, and if I refresh this, you will see there is less posts. There's 23. Here you go. Mm. Right? If I go to categories, I believe there is no category organization anymore. Check this out. There is oh, no category. Gone. If I go to the um, silo pages, there is no, there is just four pages, right? So now what I can do, let's say I can add a new silo and I can say, let's see what we have, time management tips, better organizing, like time management tips is not relevant, so we would delete that as well in normal case, right? So what I will do, so let's say organizing, organizing 
your home, home for example, right? And I, I really like how it's set up like this, where you can visually see everything that you that it's produced. Like this is yeah. very well designed. Yeah. So now, as you can see, it created automatically this um, uh, organ organizing home thing, right? And what I can do now, I can populate entire entire silo with keywords and everything else. So what I do, I click this button, and now it goes out. It finds all the keywords. Uh, it will put those keywords here, visual, so we can see them. You see, here's all the keywords, right, which are, again, relevant and everything else. And it now creates posts again. So it finds everything and creates posts. And as you can see, it happens really, really fast, right? There is, like, no delay whatsoever. It's really, really fast. And again, you are not happy with any of these keywords. For example, home organizing blog, I don't want that. I will remove this. I don't need this, right? I can just remove it, as you can see, clear successfully. And pending, you can remove it afterwards completely and block this keyword and never use it again. So that's how you organize all the website here, right? Then the, the, the next cool part is content layout, and included la content layout is just amazing. So by default, we basically uh, enable uh, content from Yahoo Answers, uh, Pixabay images, and YouTube videos. But you have here options to use Google Images, Yahoo News, Google News, Feedzilla, um, as a content sources in YouTube videos, obviously, right? And what's cool about this is that, for example, if right now we have the, the for entire site, we have a Pixabay post image on top, and I don't want it, I can just delete it, you know? And I can move them around, I can put monetization however I want, and let's say I don't want this last image to be there, I will remove that, and I will put, for example, Google News, right? I click Save. Everything is saved. Now, what this means is when new content will be generated, it will automatically apply this new feature, right? Mm -hmm. So it's very, very powerful. And let me show you when you go to site itself, right? So here you have five silos, right? And as you can see, there is nothing that would distract it, right? There's, there's no sidebars. Like, the, all the other silo plugins basically are leaking links from the page, right? Because there is a bunch of other stuff that is linking to all over the place. We don't have that. But when we go inside of the time management tips, let's say in that silo, did you see how navigation oh, changed? Oh, wow, yeah. Right? And now, now I go back to home, navigation is this. Now I go to time management tips. And what this means is that when somebody, you have to remember that every single page or post on your website is an entry and exit page or post. This means that people from Google can, can enter your site from every single page. So if they enter from, let's say, time management tips silo, right, they will see this navigation, which is all about time management tips, right? If they go to this one, it will change again. There's different unique links. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, so everything is extremely relevant, just like you were saying before, all about relevancy. Yep. It's within the silo. So we, the only thing that is leaking backlinks is homepage, but homepage is the most important money keyword anyway. So obviously you want to link to it from every single page, right? Yeah. And that's what happens on Dynamics. Now, here's the thing. You can change the navigation labels. For example, you are not happy with this effective time management skills. It's too long, right? So what you can do, you can go inside, and for example, you can change also time management tips uh, this label to anything you want, and let's say we want to change this particular, right? What do we do? We leave the keyword as it is, and we say time management for students, right? And now the navigation will be applied with this new key, uh, new uh, label that we just created. That's what you can do for every single post or page. So your navigation here on top looks beautiful. That's that what you is, That looks so awesome. That's amazing. Yeah, and then um, let's, let me quickly show you two more things. So monetization, and I think monetization is, uh, is massively amazing. So monetization allows you to basically add five different blocks, uh, monetization blocks, or we call them sections, on uh, your content layout. Remember content layout here? So if we go back, you see, here you can add monetization, and here you can select the section which you want to use, right? You see that? 
Wow. So each so each one can have a wow. So each section each one can have a different monetization. Person. Yes, and you can just drag and drop how many monetizations you want. It doesn't matter. Just select okay. Here I want number three. Done editing. Save. Boom. Now <laughs> the three wow. will be applied. So you just imagine how many plugins uh, you can remove just because you have all of this in one plugin, right? So now you go to monetization and let's say you want to create, let's say you, you are promoting Amazon products but you are not sure which one converts the best. So what do you do? You create variant number one. So this is, let me just do this very simple. This is my Amazon product number one, right? So I, I click done. It's done, right? Now I click another variation and I say, hey, this is my Amazon product number two. Like this, right? Click, done, save. Now, and obviously you can add AdSense script. You can add anything. I just showed the very simple version, right? We can add absolutely anything. It can be ClickBank links, AdSense ads, Amazon scripts, you name it. It can be even opt-in form that will be displayed within the page, right? So you can add any kind of uh, HTML code and all of that stuff. HTML, JavaScript, whatever you want. Nice. Absolutely. And now what happens when the monetization block number one will show up on the page, each time it will show different variation. And then you can look on inside of your whatever, whatever the monetization you are using, you can look and see what actually converts, what makes you money. So let's say there is uh, there is like 100 different Garcia Cambodia on Amazon, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say you promote them, but which one you know converts the best, whether the green bottle or maybe blue bottle, right? How you can know that? You need to split that as that. So what do you do? You create uh, here in the monetization section, you create number of variants, and boom, and you have the split test automatically done. That's, that's amazing. Cool. Yeah, that's Finally, amazing. We have curation in there. So what do you need to do for curation is just simple click on, select frequency. So I want to post it every day. I want to post every other day. So how often, how basically, whether, whether you want to put, like, whenever you want to post, right? Another thing, you can select the start date. So there, like, if you enable on all of these automatically, you want to select different frequency, but also you want to select different time when they get published, right? So you can select, for example, I want to start this on 19. This one I will start on 20th. This is going to out out on 21st, 22nd, and this is going to out on 27th. And now, when you save this, like basically your site will be updated regularly, but they will start to do updates based on these settings that we just provided. That, that, I mean, I'm blown away right now. <laughs> And um, the, fun, the, the other thing that I want to, the final thing that I want to show is that you can put everything on the draft mode. And what this means is if you are not, uh, you, you don't want to rely on auto-generated content, no problem at all. You click in draft mode, you click save, which means the next time when, uh, when uh, content will be generated, it will be published in a draft mode. So you can go in, edit everything, change everything however you want, and Boom! Then publish yeah, it. That's, that's very it. helpful. That's, that's extremely helpful. And also, if you, you know, you if you don't want to do it yourself, you can get your VA to go in there and then just quickly scan through the, the drafts. Exactly. Exactly. Finally, um, uh, what uh, like the site manager of P1 Traffic Machine is extremely smart. So there will never be used the same keyword again, which means that you will only target unique keywords per page, which really helps you to understand how Google reacts on stuff, right? So if your page is targeting time management tips, you don't want to target time management tips with another page, right? You just mm -hmm. want to target it with one page so you can maximize the optimization power and, and get the maximum results. So that's basically a, kind of a quick, um, let me just go back, sorry, a quick uh, overview. Um, yeah, let me switch back to what P1 Traffic Machine can do. Yeah, that, that's amazing. I mean, I'm blown away. Literally everything we just talked about you can do with that one plugin. Um, so, I mean, I'm blown away. So let, let, let's talk a little bit about the specifics. So when, when can people get their hands on P1 Traffic Machine uh, and at what time, what day? Yep. So P1 Traffic Machine launches on 20th of May at 12 um, p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. 
Um, we will be open for about seven days. That's the plan. Um, price will go up um, in uh, in a, in, a, in an hour. Or so because we obviously we know the value of the software and. What we will actually do after the launch, we close it completely so it's not going to be available. And later, um, in about two, three months, when we will, we will basically uh, get all the feedback from customers and we will improve it significantly where it's needed uh, to add new features. Like, for example, we have an idea to um, uh, create a monetization curation, which basically is that you can click one button and generate everything from Amazon or everything from Com Commission Junction. And not like automatically, but you can select what you want. Because I don't believe in monetization automatically, like spinning automatically, because it's it's not smart. You need to know what you offer to people that comes to your site in order to make money. You need to know that number, and you need to know that offer. So we, we will close it down, and then it's going to be sold for about 500 bucks because this software is worth it. It's just yeah. uh, it's just it's just totally worth it. So. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, I mean, I, I, I agree. I, I remember um, when I first built my, my entire site myself, uh, the first SEO site I ever built, I mean, it took me forever. I, I wrote all the content. I set up the, the entire, uh, you know, silo and the structure and all of that stuff. I, I, I you know, I did everything myself. Yeah. Um, and not, not to mention, I mean, the fact that you can switch different menus when, when people are navigating through your yeah. site, I mean, that's something that's not easy to do, you know. Here, I, 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 here's the thing. Sorry, sorry for interrupting. No, 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 go ahead. Here's the, here's the thing. You know, uh, there are silo plugins that says, okay, we build this silo menu, right? But menu is not what silo is about. Silo is about isolating everything else, building a theme that is super relevant to specific topic. But just because you have drop down menu with something on the side doesn't mean that it's a silo. Google is not stupid. Right, it's they know that it's not a it's not a silo structure. It's just pretending to be the silo structure. So you have to have a dynamic navigation in order to make dynamic navigation on WordPress. It's a nightmare. Um, like I don't know how our guys called it this, but um, they 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 spent like four or five weeks on this to make it happen. And uh, and yeah, and another thing that I want to say that we are a professional software company. We have twenty plus developers working. Um, Full time, right? So in 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 my software company, uh, there are 20 people. We work together with, as you know, Andy Fletcher. He's the CEO and 50% uh, partner of Peter Garrity Publishing. So we are a professional software company. We didn't build the software, you know, just to release the software and then we forget about it. We build the software to serve our customers. So support and guarantees and all of that is in place to the maximum highest level possible. So. There's no question whether the software will work with this theme or that theme. We have tested it a thousand times. Like when I gave you review copy, for example, it was version 88. Uh, now we have version 145, and it was like a week ago, right? So, so we have done like we have done about thousand tests. We have three full-time people that are testing software every single time, every single day. Um, so it's a serious, serious setup to really. We want to make it as simple as possible. Uh, so if you want to launch a money site, you don't need to get an MBA in SEO. You can rely on P1 Traffic Machine that it will do everything you need to do. And then you can just uh, figure out how you want to monetize, tweak the page when it ranks on Google, so you can see how Google reacts on it, tweak it a little bit, and I have training about it that will explain those tweaks, which is, which is relatively simple and any human being can understand. So you don't need to go to menus and dig into some redirects or some canonical URLs. It's something that most people have no clue about. So everything is taken care of with one push with P1 Truck Machine. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one of one of my favorite things that I saw was the, the monetization section, how you can literally split test what's going to work and what's not right with inside. I mean, you just add three to four different products. Maybe you have, for example, a laptop site and you can add three to four different laptops within there with your affiliate link and see yep. which one's the one that's selling the best. I mean, that, that alone is just, it's worth it just for that. Yeah, uh, think, think, that about, th think about this, in the monetization you can add opt-in form. And you can put that opt-in form anywhere you like on the page, like on the page, on the content part, right? So yeah. now imagine you put some headline, you start content with a little bit, and there's an opt-in form. But next time there is some affiliate link. And then you see what happens more, whether your opt-in form actually converts. 
maybe your opt-in form sucks and it doesn't convert. And you try to build the list with the opt-in form that never converts, never makes any 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 ROI. But now you will know that because you can you can see how many opt-ins you got. You can run it for a few days, see how many people came to the page, and see what what got more ROI, whether the link affiliate link with direct sales or whether you got more subscribers. And based on that, you can make a judgment and a decision and adjustments. Yeah, I mean, I mean, then just just from that, I mean, taking it a step further, you can even probably split test opt-in forms. So different opt-in forms with different headlines and different buttons, and see which one converts the different best. Image, different image for your cover, for example. <laughs> yeah, there's so much. Yeah, there's so much that can be done. Yeah, it's it's it, that, that's why I said in the beginning that what we wanted to build is we didn't want it to build so-called push-button software that is just basically you push button, but it doesn't produce anything re relevant. Uh, we wanted to create a professional software for anybody. So my five years old son, old son can type in a keyword and push a button and get a site ready. Afterwards, when you get smarter, you can adjust everything or, you know, when you, when you get, how I say it usually is this. You launch a website, you see what Google says about it. When you get that feedback, that's where you adjust it. Because Google will not kill you just because you created content. There's no such a thing as dupl duplicate content. There's no such thing. The, the duplicate content kind of myth is that if your content is duplicate, it will not rank. That's all. You, there's no penalty. It will just simply not rank, right? And it's easy. You, check, you, you press a button, uh, you check with CopyScape, and you see whether it, uh, it works or not. And another thing, we don't have um, any paid integration um, to run P1 traffic machines. So you don't need to buy spinners or whatever. Usually when, when, when something like that, um, like when people buy software, there is a need for spinners. We don't need it because how we uh, basically take care of uniqueness is with the layout. When you, when you change the layout, there will be no equal page on the web because anybody can create different layout. And most likely in your niche, nobody will be with the same website, with the same style of layout, right? So that's how it works, and it works really, really good. Awesome, awesome, guys. So uh, for those of you that are still watching, I mean, pay close attention for uh, my email on 20th of May. You're going to want to grab this. I mean, just like you said, after the seven days, uh, they're going to be closing down and then just improving the plugin even more. And then after that, um, you know, I'm sure it's going to come out at a much, much higher price, like I said, at least 500 bucks, and it's much, yep. it's really worth it at that price. Um, yep. So make sure you pay attention for my email. Look out for it on the 20th of May, right at 12 o'clock. Uh, right below this video, you're going to see all the amazing bonuses that I and my partner, Devin Zander, have put together, which are all extremely relevant for P1 Traffic Machine. Uh, Peter, I want to say thank you for being here. Okay. Um, thank you for sharing your expertise, and uh, if there's anything, any closing remarks that you want to share, please feel free. Yeah, what, what I want to say is that uh, be ready to excite it. Be ready to surprise when you will see the price. Uh, it's ridiculous in comparison what this software will do for you. And yeah, as Joshua was saying, um, after seven days, we're closing down, and uh, we will relaunch it with, uh, with a price tag 500 or more because it's worth it. So. Make sure you, you click the link below, check all the bonuses, grab we are Joshua and Devin's link. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to have you as a customer and we will serve you well. Sounds good, Peter. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye.